pretty soon Nvidia is set to release three new GPUs and one of them is going to be a response to the shortage and probably not so new. We're going to talk about which one would be right for you depending on the type of GPU buyer that you are. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. They say every time you do, Nvidia releases a GPU especially for you. All right, so Nvidia is set to release three new GPUs and no, we're not talking about the next generation Lovelace or RTX 4000. We're gonna talk about three very specific GPUs. They kind of make sense in a way, in other ways they don't. And one of them is specifically addressing the shortage. First, let's talk about the one that probably less people will buy, and that's going to be the 3090 Ti. Now, there's been a lot of talk of an even higher level Ti version of the 3090. After all, the 3080 got its Ti variant, and the 3090 is not necessarily a Titan card, even though it sort of goes into that workstation type atmosphere just because of the amount of power that it has. It truly is a, a hybrid card, but it's still a GeForce gaming card at the end of the day, an RTX GPU, so would make a lot of sense to actually get a 3090 Ti. So what are we to expect with a 3090 Ti? Well, first, on the negative side, we could expect higher TDP, more power draw. The original 3090 already goes pretty crazy with 350 watts, and as we know, that number can really balloon very quickly up to 500 watts with some of the third-party AIB models, such as the Kingpin or even the Asus Strix or EVGA for the 1.3. So 500 watts plus is not really something that's very surprising and we even heard rumors that the RTX 4000 may come in close to even 600 watts or at least way above 500 watts. That would make sense with the type of power that these GPUs are going to need in order to really perform at the next level. Makes sense they're going to be that high power draw. So you can expect the TI variant, while it's not going to be crazy like five or 600 watts, you can expect it to be certainly more than the current 3090. So what are you getting in return for that extra power draw. Well, I think the biggest feature or the biggest spec upgrade that the 3090 Ti will get is the GDDR6X VRAM still the same, but it's gonna be just faster in general than the existing 3090. So who is this gonna benefit? For gaming, it's not really gonna be that big of a difference. The actual GPU performance in gaming titles, while it likely will be a couple percentage points higher, much like the 3080 Ti is to the 3080, and right in between the existing 3090, I really don't think the gaming performance is gonna be anything to write home about. It's not gonna be next generation level performance. Faster VRAM certainly may help in some cases, but it's still going to be the same 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which is obviously overkill for gaming. Now, where it really will make an impact, there are two main areas. First, and that's why this is a hybrid GPU, sort of in between gaming and workstation level, that's going to be for content creators and different scientific applications, basically sort of, you know, professionals or, or prosumers that use these GPUs to render videos or do machine learning and things like that. The faster VRAM certainly will help, especially in rendering of really high resolution video files. So those people will certainly see some benefit. Of course, it's still not next generation improvements, but that's certainly gonna be better. Now, this is gonna be an interesting one. The second group that this may perhaps be advantageous to is gonna be cryptocurrency miners. As we know, the 3090 is the RTX 3000 series card that has the highest hash rate, generally somewhere between 160 16 up to almost 130, depending how people overclock it, undervolt it, etc. So in theory, faster VRAM, faster memory bandwidth should be a big boon to any type of cryptocurrency mining. Let me give you guys an example. Take the W6800 workstation card. That's going to be the AMD GPU. Compare it to the previous generation Radeon 7 AMD GPU. Now, this newer GPU, you would think, should have better mining crypto mining performance than the previous uh, version, but in fact it does not. Since the newer version, the W6800, has sort of just a standard, you know, GDDR6 type of VRAM, and it's around half the total bandwidth of the previous Radeon 7, which has the much faster HBM2 uh, VRAM, that one just has much better performance than the newer GPUs. So that shows you that, especially for cryptocurrency mining, the VRAM, it's not only about the amount of gigabytes, 
but also the speed, the bandwidth, if it's up to like one terabyte instead of, you know, 512 gigabyte or something like that, it will be better in that aspect. Now, another thing is LHR or light hash rate. So far, NVIDIA has left the 3090 alone. They've made every other GPU up to the 3080 Ti be LHR or light hash rate, meaning that basically while they still have their full performance for gaming and for, you know, content creation, other applications, they are limited in performance when it comes to a few specific algorithms such as ethereum that's definitely the big one that they tried to limit the idea here is that these gpus would then be bought by gamers and then crypto miners would go and buy nvidia specific mining gpus i don't think that really worked out in practice as well as it looked good on paper but certainly with people having workarounds around lhr gpus it's been a little bit more of a challenge maybe a little harder than it would have been otherwise if people have just had you no know, full fat sort of gpus without any type of limitation so so most likely we can expect the 3090 Ti to continue to be without any type of restriction just because it seems like Nvidia wants to keep that top tier GPU without any limitations at all. So that would mean this is a GPU not necessarily targeted at crypto miners, but if it's still profitable whenever it releases, certainly it should be very popular with cryptocurrency miners. So let's go into the next GPU that may be releasing soon. This is going to be another version of the RTX 3080, but with 12 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 10. It's basically the same speed VRAM as the existing. The only difference there really is the extra two gigabytes of VRAM. Now you could say that that's maybe just a little slight re fresh of the 3080 um, would make a lot of sense 10 gigabytes of vram while it's not limiting at the current time for most use cases you can make an argument that in certain games especially games that the 3080 are, is capable of having high performance in like maybe flight simulator 2020 or 4k or if people do want to play 8k in the upcoming future you could see how 10 gigabytes of vram may start to be a limitation for more and more people as time goes on so having 12 gives you a little bit more leeway and if they have to refresh the gpu anyway it makes sense to give it a little bit more vram now this certainly seems like it would be a gpu that would be lhr most likely and definitely would be more targeted towards the gamer crowd as opposed to the 3090 ti which is going to be more hybrid with content creators and crypto miners and just maybe the occasional gamer that just wants the fastest gpu but the 3080 12 gigabyte i would think it's probably lhr so that means it's going to be a gamer centric GPU and with two extra gigabytes of VRAM certainly much more future proof and much more capable of you know combating whatever AMD comes out with which generally has more VRAM than Nvidia at similar price points take for example all of the you know 6000 series GPUs with 16 gigabyte of VRAM even though it is the slower variant it still has more and at least for the marketing purposes seems like it makes sense so 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the 3080 does make the 3080 Ti a little bit funny. Who knows exactly what NVIDIA is thinking, but they've done stuff like this before, such as the 3060 versus 3060 Ti. 3060 Ti is by far the better GPU for gaming, but the 3060 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, just has more of it, which doesn't really make that much sense until you think of it in sort of marketing terms and perspectives. If you compare it versus AMD's GPUs, then it starts to make a lot of sense, even though it does perform worse than the 3060 Ti. So that brings us to our final GPU that they're bringing back and it actually has a little bit in common with that 3060 and that's going to be 12 gigabytes of VRAM but this time it's going to be in the old 2060. That's right Nvidia they're bringing back the RTX 2060. Now this one is going to have a little bit beefier specs compared to the previous you know 2060. It's more like a 2060 super in a way. TDP is going to go up a little more the power draw and and most interestingly, it's going to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, where once again, 12 gigabytes of VRAM doesn't make too much sense on a GPU on the level of the 2060. Recently, I heard of a couple of modders actually putting 12 gigabytes of VRAM on a 2060 and testing it out. And the results really indicated not that big difference, which we really would expect uh, you know, to happen. We're going to have to see exactly what it is. But once again, this seems like another marketing move. They're bringing back a GPU that's old, which really doesn't make sense. Typically, you 
you don't see like a company like Apple bringing back some old phones or something like that, they'll at least redesign a lot of it so it's a new product. But this one is flat out a 2060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. They probably have to add that VRAM just so it seems like the value is actually there a little more than rather than just bringing back a GPU. And that also, from what we've read um, recently from NVIDIA, it's also going to come at a higher price than we're probably expecting. Probably not going to be too far from the 3060 MSRP. And NVIDIA knows fully well that street pricing is much higher than any MSRP that the GPU manufacturers have set. So they probably figured let's throw in some VRAM in there. That way they can charge exponentially more than they otherwise could have. At least it kind of justifies it a little bit from their viewpoint. But for most people, it's just going to be sort of you know marketing on the box because that 12 gigabytes of VRAM on a 2060 really isn't going to make that much of a difference. But Given that we have very few GPUs under $300, actually pretty much non-existent, the ones that we do have are really pretty laughable, like a, you know, a GT 1030 or these GPUs that could basically run no game at all, would be interesting to see exactly what price point the 2060 comes at and if it can be produced in enough volume that it actually makes any sense. A GPU that was supposed to be more budget entry level, like the RTX 3050, pretty much nowhere to be seen. And the ones AMD have released, like the 6600 and 6600 XT, while they are sort of competing with older technology, they were supposed to have MSRPs of in the 329 range with the 6600, but they seem to sell for near the $500 range when you, where you actually find them for sale. And they can typically manage 1080p, but that's really all they can do. It's basically what GPUs could do three or four years ago so it's not really that big of a, of a jump and if you look at that price that's pretty much the price of an msrp 3070 which has much much higher performance so you can see the huge disconnect between availability and pricing and the products you can actually buy now compared to even a few years ago where you could get a lot more bang for your buck so very interesting that they're releasing this 2060 again. I don't expect it to be cheap at all. And if it can mine cryptocurrency, probably going to be sort of bought up by that market as well. So we can expect this even not really being all that interesting to still be a GPU that sells fairly well, just because there's a huge gap in the market, especially in that entry level, that lower level. Even if it is much more expensive than we would want or expect it to be, it's cheaper than the 3060, 3070s of the world, which are much more expensive. So you you kind of have to take it how they come right now. The GPUs are definitely very difficult to find. All right, guys, so let me know what you think about these three different GPUs that NVIDIA are releasing. This is probably going to be one of the last few releases before either some type of like a super refresh or the next generation RTX 4000. So it's probably just to fill in some gaps in the market. Let me know what you guys think down below. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.